Hi, Josh Zaring from Jay Zaring Studios. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you in Lightroom only, without using Photoshop, how to turn day, daytime photos into nighttime photos. And I'm going to add the moon in. It's going to be a soft glow type of moon where uh, it may be foggy or cloudy uh, because you can't import a moon overlay in Lightroom yet. So we're going to do it the Lightroom way with Lightroom's tools. Check it out. So without even leaving Lightroom, no Photoshop today, I'm going to take this image from this to this and this image from this to this. Okay, now let's get started. Start with the temperature. You want to drop that down. I imported a JPEG here so I don't have as much control over the temperature, uh, the white balance, but I'm going to pull that down to 74. 75 or 74 or something like that, somewhere close to that. Then we're going to move down to exposure. You don't want to take it too far down. If you take it the whole way down, you kind of get this turn the lights off look with all that color. So it goes much further than this. I'm going to leave the contrast alone. Then we can move down to the highs. Highlights. I just uh, abbreviate everything. I'm just used to abbreviating. Uh, hopefully I have a 4K monitor and it captures in 4K, so uh, I make all my text and the whole interface for the program extra big so you can see my controls, but uh, just uh, let me know. Anybody watching this, just let me know if this isn't big enough or if it's all right. So now drop shadows down. This is all, it's a visual thing here. These are just guidelines. 83, I'll drop the whites to like 30 or so. And then I drop the blacks. We're doing a lot of cutting here. And this is all so it looks like night, not just so you reduced your exposure. And once we get to the clarity, you can come back to that because that does have quite a bit of impact. If you want more of a softer, like glowy look, you can drop it down. Uh, but that won't look right right now or you can bump it up, but then you're, you'll have to Clarity does boost the highlights a bit. It's like uh, almost like contrast how it works So I'll just leave that alone for now and we'll move on to vibrance This is what uh, really impacts it other what really impacts it other than the white balance change and intentionally making your white balance too blue is Dropping the vibrance and the saturation. It makes it look more like night like right now. We have we have green grass and if you go outside at night and look at the grass it's not this vibrant green it's more of a muted almost blue everything kind of has a blue look to it at night depending on how bright the moon is I'm gonna drop that to 25 and then drop saturation to about 75 maybe 70 75 might be too far Okay, now you, you can see the look we're getting. Right now it kind of just looks dark and desaturated. So now we move on down to the color settings. And this is how I have mine set up. I don't uh, do the AHSL, I, I do the color. This is how I have it set up. Hue, saturation, luminance for each color. And I'm just gonna drop the yellow a little bit. Ordinarily we don't want a whole lot of yellow in a night scene. It, it kind of makes it look fake so we're gonna drop that that looks about right uh, the yellow also affects the greens obviously so again uh, grass has a lot of yellow in it you just don't know it until you get a boost or cut it that it's actually the yellows that you want so then we're gonna drop green that's negative 27 and this is a funny one you would think I would boost this but there is you know I'll, I'll boost it you can't really it's hard to see unless you boost the exposure back up again. But when I boost the aqua, it actually makes the grass a little bit greener and more of a bluish green. So I'm gonna drop that down to 30, 30. And then the blues, you wanna boost them because you want more of that impact of the blue. We got 30 plus 30. Now, right now, this is what we're working with. Our end result looks more like this and you'll see why here in a second. 
grab your radial tool, your radial filter, and make a circle. You can change this depending on how you want it to look. Make a circle and you want to invert mask, otherwise it's going to lighten the whole picture, the entire picture, except for one spot, and we don't want that. Put your exposure the whole way up and the shadows the whole way up, and you can mess with the highlights, but that all depends on the next step here. I'm going to close that and go to the brush tool, the adjustment brush. I already have it selected right, but uh, you want your feather the whole way, the entire way up as far as it'll go because you want the gradient. You don't want it to look like a big white circle. And if you've watched any of my other tutorials, I've something against big white circles. I, I like to do it real gradual. Uh, just, just some kind of problem I got going on visually here. But uh, you just click. Like right here I have this picture. There's one little spot. And actually when this was taken, the sun was nowhere near that, that hole there. But what we're going to do is we're going to put kind of a glowing just ethereal glow. We're not making the moon, we're making uh, more of a, the moon's so bright that it's just, it's kind of glowing. And you want the shadows and the exposure the whole way up on that. If you don't, it will be kind of not, that just doesn't look right. Uh, then we close that and go back. We're gonna make the moon going through this area here and you can see there's, there was sunlight going on to that same spot. That makes your job a little bit easier if it's there. Uh, but in the end, it really doesn't matter once, once you put this on. And you want to invert your mask again. Leave your exposure the whole way up and the shadows the whole way up. We will drop those down because this won't look proper until they are adjusted to match the photo. So you just kind of make an oval and tilt it. That was a little too far. make this as big or as small as you want as long as it looks right. Now, right now I'm making it back to daylight again with this radial filter. So now what you want to do and uh, you want to obviously boost your feather up much further than that but uh, now what you want to do is get that at the right spot. Just get that till it looks right with the exposure the whole way up and then drop the exposure down. Leave your shadows at 100 and you just you can just drop it down to zero so you know what it looked like before and then move it till it's just a little bit just like real moonlight and there you have it this is before this is after daylight to moonlight i'm going to go ahead and do that one this one quick to show you that you can you can do this with a various amount of photos. It's a little harder if the photo has people in it, but it can be done as long as you don't make them too blue. So we'll go ahead and drop our temp down again, and you can see this picture is getting real ugly as I do this. Drop the exposure. Somewhat. And then you can see that's getting really, really blue. And the highs, just drop the highs down. Just drop the shadows. The reason I drop the shadows is just to make it dark. Because this, this, these two photos are both JPEGs, so they're already not raw files. You might be able to get it a little bit darker if it's a raw file. Vibrance usually stick with the same settings here because that just seems to work for these converting to daytime, daytime to nighttime. And you can see we got really close there already. Now with this one, colors might be a little different. There isn't a whole lot of yellow there to begin with, but I'm going to see if that just go to the green. There is definitely a lot of green here. I'm gonna drop that. And you'll see the blues on the on the water here will really pop a little bit better here. Uh, it, it may seem weird at first dropping saturation on a photo and then going to the color settings and, and boosting it back up again. But uh, you could 
individually decrease all the colors and then just leave some there. That's another way of doing it. We'll get to the blue. Let's see if I drop it out, it's just a black and white photo because we, what we got now is we converted it to, there's a lot of blue in this photo now. And then you come down here and you're basically controlling the blue. So I'm gonna go with my radial filter again, and I'm gonna put the moon right around here, right where it obviously, you know, it asked for it right there. So, I'm gonna go ahead and feather that a little better here. You can also drop the clarity on this. Depending on how it looks, it will give more of a glow, a little bit more of a glow. to that overexpose that spot now that's obviously that's that's too much there so you just anytime it's too much like that just drop the exposure back down again and if you want you could actually I'm just gonna get out of this and delete that you can actually use a radio radial radio filter twice you can use one over top a smaller one if you want and that can do the job too, because the radial filter does have a little bit nicer feathering. If I can get a hold of that there. Just make sure it's round, that's all. And you feather it. And then maybe drop down the exposure a little bit. I think I'm actually going to go back. I'm going to move this out of the way in a second. Make this one a little bit bigger, since I feathered it so much. The intensity kind of dropped out of it. And grab this guy and put it back. Maybe here. Close that. You don't really have to close it. Uh, then the water. I tried this with a brush, and because of the lack of being able to feather it as much, uh, it just didn't work out right. It's the same basic principle here. Make yourself an oval. Tilt it. And this, this you can really play around with. Uh, since we're not using Photoshop at all for this, this is a challenge to see if you can get it done, something you would normally do in Photoshop in Lightroom without ever leaving Lightroom to do anything. And it is possible. Sometimes it just takes a bit more uh, little invention in your mind. <laughs> see what tools can I use to do this? I'm gonna feather that now. And that's not really too bad. So instead of layers, we're just using brushes, just for using all the tools. So now here, here we are. It's not, the, it's not gonna be the best looking moon you've ever seen. It's, it's a different type of thing uh, where there's obviously a lot of clouds or maybe even fog. So here we go, I'm gonna reset that. That's before, daytime, after, nighttime. And you can see I did a better job the first time with my, let, let's go into this here quick what I did with my radial filter there. Exposure all the way up. Yeah, pretty much the same settings that I just did. And my brush was a little bit smaller. So what you, so what you want to, you do want to experiment with the size of these circles. They're basically a circle over a circle. That one definitely looks better than the one I just did. And this one looks pretty great actually. Thanks for watching. I hope that helped you mess around with Lightroom a little more. It is a pretty vast program when it comes down to it. When you start uh, digging into its tools and becoming a power user, it really does a lot more than most people give it credit for. It's, it's not just for organizing photos. It's, it's a really powerful program. Uh, and I hope that helped you realize that. If you have any questions, concerns, suggestions, uh, please please just ask in the comments or at the end of this video, there's links to everywhere I am uh, on Twitter, Facebook, etc. So keep creating and keep it awesome. Thanks for watching. <laughs>